Hey everybody! Good to be here today. Um, I forget what I was gonna say. <laughs> A wonderful start. I wanted to go live today because I have the day off today. And usually on weekdays I stream in the evening. And I just wanted to do this as like a little experiment to see if anyone would tune in. I don't really expect anyone to tune in, um, but you know, people can always watch after the fact. And I wanted to get more daytime footage of Crystal here. That and, again, I have the day off and I'm really excited to just kind of keep going through this game with you guys. So, at last check, we have our new squad member, Rupert Grunt the Heracross, with that new Stab Rock Smash. We've got my wife, of course, with her cut. We've got Sinai Quill, the Quilava. The egg, it says it's making sounds inside. I like how it kind of shakes. Um, it's going to hatch soon, so we should be able to see what our odd egg turns into this stream. We've got Margo, the Dunsparce, my girl. Um, and finally, we have Lucius the Eevee, our new squad member. We're going to give Lucius a haircut today. Um, first, we're going to go ahead and fight this trainer here. Last time we uh, talked, we were kind of going through trainers with some of our new team members. Um, again, we'll probably try to use Lucius a little bit judiciously, not all the time. Um, because we don't want Lucius to hit level 36 before we get our Espeon. And what will probably happen is... Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to control when we're streaming, when that happens. And there's a possibility that it's going to hit the friendship threshold at night. And if that happens, I'll probably just cancel the evolution on stream and probably just have to evolve Eevee into Espeon off stream. But, um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So these are Abras. They are Psychic types, which would be super effective against our boy Heracross. But since we're faster and these Abras don't actually know any Psychic moves, they're just an easy one-shot. The test is going to be this Kadabra. I don't know if Rupert is going to one-shot it or not. Ooh, I, I love the little mustache move on that. Oh yeah, this should knock it out. Because Kadabra's weakness is its physical defense. Oh, it did not! Oh no! Let's see! Can we hold on, Rupert? Yes, we can! Yes, we can. Amazing! Let's just hit one more horn attack, finish it off. Love to see it. So there are some trainers here in National Park as well. Oh, let's get that music one more time. Mmm, love it. So we're just going to come through here to go back to Goldenrod City. There are a few trainers in there, and we are going to definitely battle them. But I want to go back to Goldenrod City so we can get our haircut. Also, can we afford our new TM? Yes, we can. So, if you recall, we bought the TM for Thunder Punch. That's going to come in handy later. I also want to buy the TM for Fire Punch right now, because that is something that will come in great handy for our starter Pokemon. I don't think Quilava can learn it, but Quilava's evolved form can learn it. And that'll probably be his most powerful fire type move, at least for a while. So let's go ahead and pick that up. There's the electric punch. A fiery punch can cause a burn. Love to see it. Okay. So we got those. That's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and pick up... They don't have Pokeballs here. So let's go ahead and get some great balls. Just a handful. Like I said, we got some more trainers coming up here, so we're not going to be running out of anything. But again, our odd egg should hatch soon. I was going to kind of like run down and give Evie a haircut yesterday, 
Um, but I was actually afraid that our odd egg wasn't was going to hatch off screen, and I didn't want that. Um, I I am comfortable doing some things off screen, so they weren't here last time because it was a Monday, which I learned. But this is one of the haircut brothers. We'll go ahead and put Lucius in the front. I don't remember if that matters. So, welcome to the Pokemon Salon. Oh no, <laughs> I don't know if I have enough money. <laughs> I'm the younger and less expensive of the two haircut brothers. I'll spiff your Pokemon for just 300. Oh, clutch. <laughs> Let's see, so how about it? Okay, which Pokemon? We're gonna do our boy Lucius. Okay, I'll make it look cool. Let's see, there we go, all done. Lucius looks happy. I know it can say a few things. It can say Lucius looks happy. Lucius looks delighted. Um, I don't remember. There is some chart online that kind of like tells you what those uh, mean when you get each different text, but I don't really remember. Um, oh, something else that we did here was we picked up the radio card. It's, this is the look at our Pokegear, by the way. Um, here it says the, the time, here it's the map. We have some more stuff up here. Uh, the Burn Tower, we're gonna go there later, which I'm really excited about. Olivine City, some new places we haven't been yet. Mount Mortar we might explore, very cool. And these are where we store our um, phone numbers. So if we get any phone numbers from any other trainers, we can call them. And this is the radio card. This is going to come in handy later. You can kind of this is something that's a bit outdated now, honestly, but... You have Professor Oak's talk show with his co-host Mary. You can, like, uh, Fanpy may be seen around Route 46. Oh, wow. Um, Fanpy's... Oh, so sensually suave and debonair. <laughs> Fanpy! <laughs> that's so funny. Um, so, yes, this can be... It's like a Pokemon talk show that you can tune into. You have Pokemon music from Ben, apparently. I don't really listen to these much. Ooh. We're just vibing. We're vibing to the Pokemon radio right now. Um, so that's really cool. And that's what that looks like. But, again, that is something that radio um, expansion card that we had to do the quiz for. That's going to come in handy later. Oh, let's have a look at our badges here. Oh, there's our plain badge. It's just a diamond. Mm. Just a diamond. But we are hopefully going to get our fourth badge today. So let me go ahead and scoot up here. Very excited for our odd egg to hatch. Um, again, it can be a number of things. I think it could be, I don't know six or seven different Pokemon, pretty much. But we're gonna pop in here to the National Park and fight a battle or two. I might leave these because I just kinda wanna get, get on with it <laughs> a little bit with the story stuff. But our Heracross should make quick work of this snubble. Ah, even with a berry, we got that defense drop, so this should kill. Love to see it. Love to see it. Oh yeah, those Pokemaniacs have berries on their Pokemon a lot of the time. Or Pokefans in this game. They're called Pokemaniacs in other games. Um, gosh, this music is amazing. So good. Um, so there, I think, are a handful of other trainers in the grass there, but we'll fight them later. All right. So let's get on our bike, make this a bit quicker. So we are heading back to Ecruteak City here. And we already fought these trainers. Ba -da. Ba -da. So, here is the gym. This is Ecruteak City Pokemon Gym Leader Morty, the mystic seer of the future. So that's cool. But when we go in, this dude is like, hey, Morty, the gym leader, he's absent. Sorry, but you'll have to leave. <laughs> oh, like Santa. Wow, he really just kind of nudges you out of there. Um, oh, that's interesting. I never really noticed that before. I'll, I'll point this out later, but 
Uh, here we have the Burn Tower. It was destroyed by a mysterious fire. Please stay away, as it is unsafe. So in Ecruteak City, there are, oops, <laughs> there are two towers: the Tin Tower and the Brass Tower, and they're based on real towers in Kyoto. And in Pokemon, you see how this one's all burned, and you can kind of see through the top. Um, the Tin Tower is just on the other side of town here, and as the story goes, there was uh, there were three Pokemon that passed away in the fire at uh, Burn Tower at the then Brass Tower. Now it's called the Burn Tower, um, but they were resurrected by the Pokemon Ho Oh, and they were resurrected as the legendary beast Pokemon. It's a really cool piece. It's a really cool piece of lore. Um, but after you do the little event that we have here in the Burn Tower, that guy who pushes you out of the gym will actually show up right outside and he'll talk about the lore um, with you. So we'll kind of see what he has to say um, in the game here. So here is our boy Morty. He's off to the right, but this is uh, Yusin. I still don't really know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Yusin. Um, I'm on the trail for a Pokemon named Suicune. That is one of the legendary beasts and the the cover star of Pokemon Crystal. SCG, glad to meet you. I heard rumors that Su Suicune is in this burned tower, so I came to look. But where exactly could it be? And here we have our boy Morty, the gym leader, has to study what our uh, I. <laughs> Just didn't read it. Suicune, Entei, and Raikou. Those are the legendary beasts. Yusin is here, so I've decided to investigate the tower with him. Very cool. And you can run into some wild Pokemon in here, like some Rattata and whatnot. So I am just going to use some of my last repels here. And I know up here, this is not something you have to do, but this, these looking rocks are the rocks that you can break. And our boy Rupert Grunt can smash some rocks. There are... Oh, I can't carry any more items? That's silly. I hate to see that. I'm going to have to sell some stuff. Um, and I'll deposit that. Sunstone. I feel pretty okay tossing this X Defend. There we go. HP up. Love to see it. Um, so you don't actually have to know Rock Smash to progress through the story. That is something that you do have to do in other games. Um, is Smash Rocks to progress. Let's see, who's low on hit points? Um, let's give it to our girl. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do Rupert Grunt, because Rupert Grunt's not going to evolve. So, onward we go. Hidden item here, maybe? Nope. Ah, there's our red-haired friend. So we got to go through here. Oh, I was going to say, regarding the rock smash rocks, you can, there are some rocks on beaches that we'll encounter later, and you can discover Pokemon in those rocks if you smash them, which is kind of cool. I don't remember what our boy PP starts with. His music sounds like biker gang music or something. Oh, it's you. I came looking for some legendary Pokemon that they say roosts here. But there's nothing here! Nothing after all the trouble of coming to this dump! No way! It's all your fault! <laughs> I'm gonna take it out on you. Cause I'm a weak little man. He really is a weak little man. He starts with Haunter, which is a terrible matchup for my Heracross. I don't have any moves that can hit it, so we are going to switch out immediately. Wow, I'm pretty sure the only Pokemon I have that can hit this Haunter is my Cyndaquil, or my Quilava. <laughs> so here is our first instance of Curse. Curse is a move that works differently for Ghost Pokemon than it does for all other Pokemon. For all other Pokemon, it's a move that boosts your attack and defense but lowers your speed. But on a Ghost Pokemon, it cuts their HP in half, but what it does is, we'll probably see an example here, because this probably won't kill it, yeah. You see what's going to happen here is, ooh, that scary little specter shows up, and we take damage every turn. So that little, it puts a little curse on your Pokemon. And you can get rid of it by swapping out, but we're just going to stay in because, again, um, Sinaiquil is our only Pokemon that can hit Haunter. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Um... 
Okay, luckily he doesn't have a very strong move. Lick is not very strong. Okay, love to see it. Um, and if you knock out a Pokemon, you don't get cursed that turn. Um, so that's kind of like a workaround on curse. Oh, good. Love to see Rupert Grunt growing. Thank you, Sinaiquil. Okay, into Croconaw. We still don't have a favorable matchup here. So what I am going to do is... We're just going to go into Margo. Because Margo at this point is probably our most powerful Pokemon with that headbutt. Ah, it looks like Croconaw is going to try to leer and scratch us. So what we can do here, I might use a Glare. I don't think Water Gun should do too much to our girl Margo now. Um, awesome. So now this, uh, the Croconaw is paralyzed. So Glare plus Headbutt is actually a really good combo. And we saw this a little bit in the... Miltank fight with Whitney is that if it's paralyzed you have a way better chance of making it flinch because you will almost assuredly hit first and you can only make a Pokemon flinch if you hit first and you couple that with the chance of being stopped by paralysis it's a really good combo so Margo making quick work of his best Pokemon come on too easy so for Magnemite again our experienced players will know that Magnemite's a steel type now so, Rupert Grunt's fighting type moves are going to be super effective, so we're going to go into him. So yeah, there's probably not going to be too much more to say about our rival here, unless this uh, Magnemite can get really lucky with some Supersonics. There we go. Oh, nice! Got a high roll that time. I think I have. I think in Yellow, there's a video in the Yellow playthrough where I really describe. Uh, rolls of attacks. Basically, all it is is you're not guaranteed to do the exact same amount um, every time you use a move. And again, using our um, Eevee in key battles will increase its friendship a little bit more, which we want to do. And I don't know if our rival actually counts toward that. I know gym leaders do. But just in case, I'm going to use Lucius here. Not a great start at all. <laughs> Horrible start, as a matter of fact. Okay, so now I'm not even going to risk it. We definitely don't want to see um, our boy Lucius get knocked out, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch, swap him out. Yeah, and at this point, our, our boy Lucius only knows tackle, so it's not going to be too useful. However, for Morty's gym, I'm pretty sure Eevee will learn the move Bite. And like we're seeing here, Bite is a, uh, whatchamacallit, a dark type move. And it's actually very useful against ghost type Pokemon because dark is good against ghosts. And when you couple that with the fact that Eevee is a normal type. Okay, so Eevee actually doesn't learn Bite until level 30. So we're not really going to use that. Um, but something that can happen is that Eevee is a normal type Pokemon, so it actually is immune to ghost type moves. So that can be a good little combo. Um, I know if you use a Rattata up to this point, and it will know Bite, Bite or Pursuit or something, it'll know a dark type move, and that's actually a really good Pokemon to use against Morty. Because he has all ghost type. Ah, whatever, you would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. Oh, shoot. Huh. What are you doing falling into a hole? Some genius you are. Serves you right. <laughs> I love how we fall through the hole and get roasted by our rival. Um, so here, we're going to go up, and something strange will happen. Okay, so that was Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, which is super cool. And, like, it looks super simple and, you know, low-tech now, but even those little pixel, that little pixel art can really capture the imagination. Um, I dug a hole here, too. I was shocked! 
Suicune raced by like a blur right in front of my eyes. For ten years I chased Suicune and I finally got to see it. I'm all choked up! SEG, I owe this all to you. Thank you! I heard that the legendary Pokemon of Ecruti test chosen humans by allowing them to get close. I'm going to track Suicune. Uh, SCG, let's meet again. Farewell. Um, so that's super sick. Love to see that. Okay, there's a strength rock up there. Oh! Here is our egg attaching. Uh, let's see what we got. Smoochum! So Smoochum is the new baby form of Jinx, actually. Um, and I am going to name her Kissy, because she's a Smoochum. And that just feels appropriate to me. It's like Chrissy. Um, so Jinx is a... Psychic and Ice type Pokemon, which is actually a really good type, specifically for this game. Um, so here's that guy that pushed us out of the gym. Let's have, let's see what he has to say about the lore. In the distant past, this tower burned in a fire. Three nameless Pokemon perished in it. A rainbow-colored Pokemon, hello, descended from the sky and resurrected them. It's a legend that has been passed down by Ecruteek gym leaders. Me? I was a trainer way back when. Ho 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 ho. So he's not so rude after all. Um, so that's the really that's the story of Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. And there are some Pokemon that have just like weird, punny, kind of Americanized names, like uh, you know, like Charmander, for example, like a Char Salamander. Um, but there are some Pokemon that just have like straight up like uh, Suicune. Uh, technically it'd be Suicune, uh, Entei, and Raiko. Those are straight up just Japanese names. Um, but, uh, yeah, so those are the legendary beasts. Entei and Raiko roam around the Johto region. You could kind of randomly run into them, which we, which might happen. Usually it happens like once or twice a playthrough. Um, but there's a little something special for Suicune for this, um, for this game, because it's the mascot of this game. So, now that we have that out of the way, we are going to, oh yeah, we just have uh, Smoochum sitting here on the squad. What, is, what does Kissy know to start? Pound, lick, and dizzy punch. That's a pretty good move. Um, but, again, I didn't want to use the Pokemon from the Odd Egg. We'll leave her on the team. This is a dance studio, by the way. Um, not only are the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenge them, but I've never been able to leave a scratch. Lad, if you can defeat all the Kimono Girls, I'll give you a gift. Oh, sick. Sounds good to me. So... We have to beat all of these dancers on the stage. Oh, and like I was saying about Smoochum, um, I didn't want to use the Odd Egg because I didn't know what it was going to be. Jinx is actually a really good Pokemon, but I just don't really like it. I think it's really ugly, <laughs> and I just don't care for it. So we're not going to use Jinx. You could use whatever hatches from the Odd Egg in your playthrough if you want. Hmm. And this is, again, like, Ecruteek City is kind of where you really see the theme that they've got going on in the Johto region of, like, um, traditional stuff. Like, this is like a traditional dance studio. Um, so this is actually a pretty bad matchup for Rupert Grunt, but we should be able to knock out this Flareon in two hits. I was wrong. I was wrong. Um... And something that we'll see with the Kimono Girls here is... We're just going to stay in. Because we should still live this. Okay. Um, something that we'll see with the Kimono Girls is that they each have an evolution. And I know we used Jolteon in the yellow stream. But uh, I really wanted to use one of the new evolutions in this game. And like I said, Espeon's one of my favorite Pokemon ever. 
Uh, Naoko was defeated. Oh, you are very strong. Thanks. Thanks, Gurley. Um, I never, ever remember what they have. I'm just going to stay in with Rupert Grunt here. I'll use this last potion. We don't really need potions much anymore. How many super potions do I have? Uh, we'll, we'll have to sell some stuff. Okay, I got seven super potions. I'm going to go ahead and save again. I think the next one might be Umbreon. Let's see. What does she have? Sayo. Espeon, I was wrong. Ugh. Love it. Love Espeon. Such a cool Pokemon. And again, this is a Psychic type, so this is not going to be good for Rupert Grunt. We're going to go into my girl Margo because she's beefy. She'll be able to take some hits. Ugh. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Confusion is a move that can confuse you, even though it has a pretty low chance. It usually just does regular damage. Oh, boy. Guys. There we go. I was about to st Ooh! Love to see the crit. Love to see that crit. All right, don't miss. Don't miss. This Espeon is kind of really trying to troll us. All right, good. Ugh. Goes down quickly this time, but Espeon will be a powerhouse on our squad. When the time comes. Again, it's probably going to take us a while. Uh, many haircuts. Many vitamins for Lucius. A lot of steps. Oh, hi, Mom. What do you have to say? She got us an item. Love to see it. Um, so we can deposit that sunstone and we can go pick up that uh, item from my mom, which is great. Another great thing is that I love saving money with my mom because let's say you're in a situation where you lose and you lose a lot of money. You will still have money in the bank from your mom. So Rock Smash is going to be super effective against Umbreon. This is a lot of people's favorite evolution, and I will say Umbreon is pretty objectively sick. Um, but it's also the way it's built and kind of the way its stats are, they made it more of like a defensive Pokemon. So I don't really love using it in playthroughs. It's not that fun to me. Ooh, we're lowering that defense left and right. Um, but Rupert Grun will make quick work with our... Rock Smash here. I do still love Umbreon. Both Espeon and Umbreon are like favorites of mine, but you know. We'll stay in with Heracross, because Heracross is almost up to uh, up to snuff here. <laughs> I am realizing though that we have very few moves to deal with ghost types in Morty's gym. So that could be... that could be an issue. Um, we might have to really depend on our boy Sinaiquil because he's gonna have a super effective move, that ground type mud slap, which is great. Um, I'm trying to learn Fury Attack. I mean, it's not very useful, but we'll learn it. I'll get rid of it. We aren't going to use Endure. I wish Rupert Grunt knew Foresight, because that would help us hit those ghosts with our normal and fighting type moves, but alas. So there's just one more Kimono Girl here. I'm going to go in with Lucius for now. Uh, I guess one thing we could do, we could bring back Rocky um, just to have another option against those ghost types. It'll be good to have more than one Pokemon that can hit. Um, once we get out of the dance studio here, we'll probably do some some maintenance. Sell some items, deposit some items. Ooh, I just realized it's Eevee against Jolteon. And I'm also realizing that Jolteon might know Double Kick. I don't know if it does yet. Um, nice, Eevee. I see you. Thundershock. That should be fine. Awesome. Good work, Lucius. And again, like I keep saying, we're not going to use Lucius too terribly much. But you want to use them in battle some. Because that helps their friendship as well. 
You just cannot let them faint. I will reset if Lucius faints, because I want to make sure we have all the friendship we need to evolve as quick as possible. Not only are the... We said this already... Uh, the way you battled, it was like watching a dance. It was a rare treat to see. I want you to have this. Don't worry, take it. So this is HM03. HM03 is Surf. That's going to come in huge handy. I don't think any of our Pokemon can learn it right now. Um, we do have one Pokemon in the PC that can learn it. Our Poliwag. Like, I'm pretty sure nothing can learn it. Yeah. Um, oh, I actually want to see if our boy Quilava can learn Fire Punch. I don't think so. I think he has to evolve first. Yes, he does. Um, so we are actually going to teach that to our Poliwag. And we are going to surf to find a new team member. We're not going to do it today, though. Um, we're probably going to do it on the next stream, which I'm very excited about. And you actually need the badge from Ecruteek City to... Um, you surf outside of battle. So really my plan is to kind of go through the gym in the rest of our stream today and let's see. Let's deposit our smoochum. Uh, we'll keep my wife for now. Oh, what does Cryberry Baby know actually? Yes, we will bring out Crybaby, because that rock throw will be able to hit their ghosts, and that can come in, come in real handy. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll deposit my wife for now, because we're going to need her cut at some point, but she is not going to be able to really battle at the gym. And again... Uh, the Sudowoodo and Rocky aren't members of our main squad, but the fact that they can hit ghosts is going to come in huge handy, just as a backup to Sinequil here. Um, Alright, our levels are actually looking pretty solid overall. I'm just going to get Sinequil up with some trainers in the gym. I forgot to do this. Got to do some item stuff. We are going to deposit, we'll deposit this heal powder an energy powder. I kind of just want to get rid of them because I don't even want to accidentally use them because they can lower your friendship, which is a big thing as we have learned. Okay, we can take out a repel that our mom bought, a super potion our mom bought. Great to see. And I'm going to sell a few of those X items. Um, those X items like X attack and whatnot, they can um, increase your attack by one stage in battle. But... I just don't like to use them. <laughs> so usually when I get them, I sell them. And if I really decide that I really need them later for whatever reason, I can always buy some. Um, and we just got rid of those potions, so that actually works out a little bit. Um, let's buy a couple super potions. We'll buy three. I think that'll give us ten. Um, I'll buy two more revives, just in case. Always good to have. And that should do it for now. How many Pokeballs do I have? Six Great Balls. Once we get through with the gym stuff, I'll buy more so we can catch our next squad member. But yeah, for the rest of this stream, the plan is to just go ahead and do, 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 make our way through the gym, hopefully defeat Morty. So in this gym, what you'll see is there's an invisible floor. I'll actually show you in a minute. Um, so these are all like sages and mediums that are in this gym. Um, and they all use ghost Pokemon. However, again, another big criticism <laughs> with this game, it kind of just keeps coming up, is that Morty doesn't use the one new ghost Pokemon that they introduce in Generation 2. Okay. So, Mean Look is a move that makes you unable to switch out your Pokemon. And usually what the Ghost Pokemon will try to employ is using Mean Look in conjunction with Curse. Meaning that you won't be able to get rid of the Curse by switching out. But luckily, we are able to knock out a lot of these Pokemon before they have a chance to Curse us. Um, 
and the mean look effect also goes away when you defeat the Pokemon that you're fighting. Um, but, hmm, nice, okay. So this Ghastly was still able to curse us, which is fine. For the next Pokemon, we'll just swap in our newly caught Pseudo Wudo. Um, it will be nice, because I won't use Pseudo Wudo for the whole playthrough, but it'll be good to show it off for you. And I love that it has its own um, overworld sprite. Because as you can see, like Lucius and uh, Quilava, for example, have the same overworld sprite. Um, usually those are made like by category in this game, so they didn't have to make an overworld sprite for every single over 200 Pokemon in the game. Um, but Pseudo Wudo gets his own because it's a special overworld encounter like we've just uh, experienced. Unfortunately for Rock Throw, it's a move that can miss, which I hate to see. Alright, love to see that though. Nice! Uh, Pseudo Wudo is a good Pokemon to use in a playthrough. It learns Rock Slide, which is the uh, most powerful rock move in the game, and it does that naturally, so that's uh, very helpful. This Ghastly decided to opt for Mean Look, so we are sitting pretty. There's only one left, and Sinaiquil should be able to make quick work of it. We'll speed through a little bit, because this guy has too many Pokemon. And a lot of time what will happen is that the ghost Pokemon will accidentally kill themselves. Um, and the whole thing with Curse and Ghost Pokemon, that... I am not an expert on this, but uh, that is something that actually has some roots in kind of like Japanese folklore um, is that like the, you drive the nail into something to curse it essentially um, so here there's an invisible floor so if you step on the wrong tile you'll just go back to the front luckily for us I know which way to go and all you got to do is just follow the trainers but for example you can step out right there and it'll just keep taking you back to the beginning so I know where to go don't worry to your viewer <laughs> All right, and I'm an anxious person, so I like to uh, save between a lot of our battles. But again, if you're playing this game for the first time and you don't have me to guide you through it, um, this uh, NPC, once you defeat her, will give you some hints. Okay, so this Haunter is actually faster than us tonight, well. Um, something that we are going to encounter with Morty that's going to be really annoying is that he is going to try to use Hypnosis. And I think we have three Awakenings. So we should be able to um, snap out of sleep. Okay, Quick Attack, that's a good move. That doesn't help us here at all. But Quick Attack, again, is a move that always hits first. It's kind of just like a way better version of Tackle. It doesn't do much more damage than Tackle, but the fact that it always hits first is super useful. Um, I know Sinaiquil's Curse, but we'll just go ahead and stay in here and just go as far as we can go. If we need to, we'll clean, we'll clean something up with our boy uh, Rocky. Yeah, we're good. And as you can see, that Haunter was trying to put a curse on us, but it actually couldn't because we were already cursed. You can't double curse. That's a rule. All right, so with that, I'm just going to pop back here and heal the squad. Because I don't want to be wasting our potions. All right, here we go. We're back now. Oh, yeah, what was she going to say about that? Fine, I shall tell you the secret of the invisible floor. The path is right before our eyes. Ah, that's cool. Meaning the eyes of the trainers. So you know that any... Any... Along the eye line of the trainers is a path you can walk. That's pretty neat. Um, okay. A couple more battles and we will beat a Morty. But how's everybody's day going? Um, I know a lot of, a lot of you will probably discover this later. Um, either just on my Twitch page or on YouTube. Um, so comment below with how your day is going. Comment below with um, your favorite Johto gym leader. I pretty much love all of them. I think they're all sick. Um, especially because, you know, again, this is my favorite game ever. 
It's always going to be my favorite game ever. Anything from Generation 2 Pokemon is, like, my fave. So, I'm pretty sure, like, half of my, like, top ten favorite Pokemon ever are all Generation 2. Um, I still really, I still really enjoy some of the new ones that get released. Um, but those are definitely my go-tos. So here, I'm going to swap into Rocky. Maybe get Rocky one more level to increase his viability for the gym. And I don't want to get Sonicwill too overleveled. Let's see. So Rocky can maybe take out two of these Pokemon, especially if they're ghastly. It's a two-hit KO with Rock Throw. Love to see it. Good work, Rocky. And again, Rocky's got that gained boosted uh, trade. Let's see. Uh, we'll go to Sonicwill for this Haunter, though. Because Sonicwill being a little extra powerful is something that we want. Love to see that critical hit. Um, we have not gotten paralyzed by Lick yet, which is amazing. Um, there we go. Because Morty's ace Pokemon is actually a Gengar at level 25, um, which can be crazy powerful for this point in the game. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know how we're going to do, gang. <laughs> we might have a reset in our near future. We should still be able to beat Morty this stream, I would think. Um, please kill it. Dang it. Okay. So this rock throw's got a hit, baby. Come on. There we go. Um, yeah, we should still be able to beat Morty this stream, even if we have to kind of go back to the drawing board and maybe fight a few more trainers outside of Ecoutique City. But again, like I said, the only Pokemon that we've got that can hit Morty's Pokemon are um, Rocky, Sudowoodo, and Sinaiquil. But I do have one plan for our boy Dunsparce, for our girl Dunsparce, excuse me, our girl Margo, pardon me, um, that I think will be very useful against that Gengar. I think the Margo Sinaiquil combo should be able to handle the Gengar, but we'll see. So we're on our way back to fight Morty. Very excited about it. Again, Rupert Grunt cannot hit him at all. Lucius cannot hit him at all. Can you give me any moves that are helpful? Maybe Sand Attack, maybe Growl? We'll see. Um, I will actually end up using Lucius in this battle just and just switch out right away just so um, Lucius can get that little bit of gym leader friendship experience all right so I actually like some of the stuff that Morty says here um, it's just interesting good of you to have come here in equity Pokemon have been revered it's said that a rainbow-colored Pokemon will come down to appear before a truly powerful trainer. I believe that tale, so I have secretly trained here all my life. As a result, I can now see what others cannot, just a bit more. Yeah, Morty is kind of like a seer into the future, allegedly. With a little more, I could see a future in which I meet the Pokemon of rainbow colors. You're going to help me reach that level. Yes. Um, so Morty's super cool. He has got two Haunters, a Ghastly, and a Gengar, which is all just the same evolution line, which is kind of lame. But um, he's still really good. And for this point in the game, he is a really nice, like, mid-level gym leader. His Gengar is actually quite powerful, like I kind of alluded to earlier. So Ghastly already be cursing. Oh no, that was a misclick, gang. I did not mean to hit that, so that might set us back a little bit. Uh, something else we might need to do, um, if you go west of town, and this is something that I'll do if we hit, uh, hit a string of bad, bad luck here with Morty, um, there's something called the Mint Berry out there that you can give to your Pokemon and it will aut automatically awaken them without wasting a turn if they get put to sleep. So yes, here we have Gengar. Um, 
So what's going to happen here is we are going to go into Margo because we want to paralyze Gengar. Margo cannot damage Gengar, but it can paralyze him. And Gengar has a very strong move. Oh, the Quick Claw! Dang it, we missed. Um, has a very strong move called... Ooh, that's not good. Hmm, let's see how this goes. Oh my gosh! I can't hit it with Glare. Oh, this isn't going good, gang. Yeah. So he likes to use Hypnosis and Dream Eater, which is not good because it's a very powerful move. Um, okay, so something that we want to do... We only have two Awakenings. Oh boy! This might be a reset, gang. Okay. Oh my gosh, Glare just won't affect! Maybe it doesn't in this game because it's technically a normal type move. Hmm. Well, we'll just let Margo get knocked out. Sorry, baby. Sorry, baby! So Sonyquil can be very useful because we can use Mud Slap to lower Gengar's accuracy. Um, and something that you can definitely do in this game is whenever they put you to sleep, if they really want to use that Hypnosis Dream Eater combo, they're always going to use Dream Eater on an asleep Pokemon. So like we're going to see here... Um, the next turn is definitely going to use Dream Eater. So we can swap into Crybaby here without really fear of being hit because Dream Eater will not affect a Pokemon that's awake. Um, oh boy. <laughs> We're getting killed here, kids. All right. So what we can do, we'll swap into Rocky because, again, we're going to get that Dream Eater. He might just use Shadow Ball here, yes. Shadow Ball is a very powerful Ghost-type attack. Um, we are in bad shape, gang. Um, this might be a reset. Because, again, Lucius can't die and can't hit Gengar. But maybe we can try some Sand Attacks. Because if we can get some Sand Attack luck... Maybe some Growls... Okay, but now it's guaranteed that Lucius will not be able to escape. And we really don't want Lucius to die. Okay, so the accuracy won't drop anymore, and we can't be recalled. Gosh dang it. Oh, kids. Kids. I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna reset. Because we cannot... Oh, wait, no. Sorry. My bad. I need to restart, not resume. There we go. Um, uh, that was frustrating. Okay. So we're here against Morty before the fight. Something that we are going to do is we are going to hop out here and we are going to grab an item. A really cool item. It is called the Mint Berry, like I alluded to. Um, so we have this guy. I think we should be able to skip him. Um, we'll let Cry Baby be first to maybe grab a level or two. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of speeding through this here. Come on. Gosh dang it. <laughs> ah! Very annoying. So, right here, we can grab this Midberry. I'll just... Ooh, maybe not. Is I wrong? I'll just fight this guy. Ah, yes, it's up there in the left corner. Uh, so this is a Psychic. He's got a Slowpoke. Um, oh, come on, guys. We we're having bad luck here at the end of our stream. So what I think we can do is we will... We'll go ahead and swap out. We'll let... Just remember to not have this. So 
So again, our strategy going into Morty once more will be to try to paralyze him. We got really bad luck with Glare missing. Um, Ah, okay. So in Generation 2, I was actually being silly. <laughs> because Glare cannot affect Gengar. So what we're going to try to do is really go with the... the Mud Slap Sand Attack strategy. But if I can help it, I'm going to just try to use Sinequil. Because... Um, we don't want Eevee to get, like, trapped and not be able to escape. Because... That was really the reason for the reset, for the most part, was because if Eevee dies, that really lowers um, his friendship. And that's just kind of like uh, another level of difficulty we're dealing with. Okay, so here's the Mint Berry. And how this will help us, it'll give us an extra turn of snapping out of sleep. Ooh, shoot. Okay, I did not want to fight her yet. I'm trying to skip some of these trainers. I believe this is a Bird Keeper. Um, I'll have Margo in the front, just in case I can't get out of it. Alright, he was just stuck there. Usually he kind of moves around. Because if I have to, we'll go in and fight more of those trainers before Morty, but I want to try to do it without it. If I can help it. Alright. So now, equipped with our new mint berry and the knowledge that I was being stupid <laughs> and that glare will not hit a Gengar, let's try this again. We will try this again with a new strategy. And again, I'll try to get Lucius in there, but if we have to... Oh, actually, I have to equip, equip the mint berry. So here, a self-awakening for sleep. So we will give this to... It's actually kind of tough, because we like to see that charcoal on Sinequil, but this is going to be more useful for now. At least I think so. All right, let's see what we can do. We got about 10 minutes left of our stream time today. Um, so we should have at least a couple cracks at Morty, and if we decide that we really can't beat him, then we will go fight some more trainers, come back, and uh, try to defeat him in the beginning of our next stream. But it's been a pleasure being here today, guys. I love this game. Again, like, the middle of the day is just my favorite time to play it. I don't know why, it just is. Um, even though I know a lot of people are at work or whatever, <laughs> I was just like, I'm free, so I want to do it. All right, so this Ghastly is going to try to lick us. We've been having some great, knocking on wood, paralysis luck as far as lick is concerned. So I'm really hoping I don't get paralyzed now. Okay, good. So Rocky's actually in a better spot to fight the Gengar. Um, let's see. Alright, I think I know what I'm going to do here. We are going to go into Sinaiquil. Because if Gengar tries to put us to sleep this time, which, by the way, that sprite is so sick. And he gives those little mean eyes at the beginning. We're going to try this Mud Slap strategy. And again, I was ready for this. Our mint berry wakes us right up, and we can just use Mud Slap uninterrupted. Um, so that's very helpful. And hopefully, by lowering his accuracy a bunch, we can prevent more hypnosis's, hypnosis's um, from hitting. And this is usually how Morty goes. Like, if you are playing kind of traditionally like I am with a pretty even team, you, sh you will be a little below his level. Um, okay. So now I can't escape. So what I'm hoping is we can just really make it, make his accuracy like untenable so that he misses us enough times that we can finish him off with our mud slaps and embers. And again, I have two awakenings to work with. So I know he's gonna try to use um, 
Dream Eater this turn. There we go. But, I, oh, that is ridiculously unlucky. Because Hypnosis only really has like a 50-50 shot of hitting anyway. And um, with five to six mud slaps like we're going to get off here. Okay, I think that's as low as his accuracy can go. Great. Awesome. So we used our Mint Berry. We used all of our Awakenings. That really, really helps to get the Gengar out of the way. The Gengar is like the big bad monster of this fight. And Morty does still have two Haunters. So what we're going to try to do here... Um, I'll try to take one of them out with, with Crybaby, the Pseudo-Rudo, because I believe one of these Haunters also knows Hypnosis, uh, which can be very, very annoying. I, it doesn't know Dream Eater, like uh, the Gengar does. Wow, nice job, Crybaby. Love to see that. And Haunter again. We are going to go ahead and go into Rocky, because if Rocky gets cursed, that's not a big deal. And then we'll still have, um, we'll still have Pseudo Wudo and, okay, Nightshade. That's a move. That's a move that will always do 23 hit points because he's at level 23. Okay, great. That is fine. So we can let Rocky go down. We still have um, our boys uh, Pseudo Wudo and Sunnyquil in the back. And again, it's just another degree of difficulty having like three Pokemon that can't do anything. It's actually kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, Lucius already got some battle action, so that's great. Let's just go into Sunnyquil, because Crybaby should be able to clean, clean up the mess if we need to. Alright, so we can take only one more Nightshade before it kills us. So I'll try to use one more Mud Slap. Oh, okay. Ah! So that was actually a really good use of Spite. Wow, you don't see that very often. Um, he lowered my power points to where I literally couldn't use Mud Slap anymore, so now I have to use Ember. Um, so you really don't see that happen. Also, I think we should, yeah, we should be able to wrap this up, but I love how Haunter's kind of like evil hand stretches out when he comes out of the Pokeball. Haunter's sprite is amazing in this game. All right, one more Nightshade, one more Ember. That'll do the trick. Good strategy, gang. I'm glad we were able to do that this stream. So now, boom, Leader Morty was defeated. I'm not good enough yet. All right, this badge is yours. Um, so, now that we have the Fog Badge, we can use Surf outside of battle. And that is something that we're going to do on our next stream because we're going to be able to get our next team member, which I'm very excited about. Pokemon that knows Surf will be able to use that move anytime. I want you to have this too. This is the TM for Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is an 80 base power ghost type move. Very strong move in this game. We might employ that later. I think our Espeon might be able to learn that. That could be very useful. Um, it's Shadow Ball. It causes damage and may reduce special defense. So, Morty... I always thought Morty's kind of parting words here were sad. He goes, use it if it appeals to you. He says, I see. Your journey has taken you to faraway places, and you have witnessed much more than I. I envy you for that. And that's all he says. Poor guy. I hope he gets to see the world someday. So, folks, with that, um, we have our fourth gym badge. Dang, we're halfway through Johto. That's crazy. Um... So there's the fog badge there by Morty's head spinning around. It has been a pleasure um, today. I'm so glad we were able to go through the burn tower, beat the kimono girls. We were able to defeat Morty once we readjusted our strategy. Um, gave Evie a haircut. Come on. Great day. Um, but with that, I will see you next time. I think I'm planning on Friday this week. If you're watching this on YouTube years later, that will mean nothing to you, but uh, thanks for being here. <laughs> and um, I'll go ahead and pop a save here. Thank you so much for watching this. I have a 
wonderful, wonderful time sharing the magic of video games with you. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Peace out, kids.